I'm Kenneth Adams, president of LaGuardia Community College. We have a special program today uh, in which we're going to speak to three LaGuardia colleagues uh, who were part of the college's incredible services for students who are deaf and hard of hearing. Um, many of you know that the program for deaf adults at LaGuardia Community College goes back 45 years, almost to the founding of LaGuardia. Um, so for all that time, LaGuardia has had a unique set of services to help students who are deaf and hard of hearing prepare for college. And then when they enroll, to help them succeed and earn their degrees. Um, but we also do a lot of work at LaGuardia to help people learn American Sign Language and learn interpreting so that they can do that in their careers, um, sometimes as teachers or as healthcare professionals um, or in academia and education. So what happens at LaGuardia is that really um, we have different services and different programs for students who are deaf and hard of hearing in various parts of the college. And frankly, for me as a new president, it was a little confusing because there was so much going on. All of it really important, really great work. So I wanted to make a video with my friends who you're about to meet where we could tell the full story all together and shine a spotlight on this incredible aspect of LaGuardia that is really unique in CUNY and frankly unique in colleges in this part of the country. And you'll hear about this again from our colleagues. So with us today for this program uh, are John Collins, who is our Deaf Program Studies Director, uh, Liz Loria, who's the Project Director for our American Sign Language English Interpretation Program or AEIP, and Kim Lucas, who works at the Program for Deaf Adults as an academic advising specialist. Um, and many of my friends, including Kim, have been at LaGuardia for many years. And they've got, they, they're have they part of a team that has helped literally thousands of students from all across the metropolitan area uh, get their education uh, and move on in their careers uh, because of the support that they provided them with. Now, we couldn't do this interview, as you can tell, without our interpreters. And both of our interpreters today, by the way, are graduates of our ASL English uh, interpretation program. And that's uh, Jennifer Ward and Andrea Kremer. So thanks in advance to both of our interpreters. My first question is to John. John Collins, as I mentioned, runs our Deaf Studies program, uh, which is a, an associate degree program, a liberal arts program. John, tell us about the origins of the program a little of its history uh, and, and the kind of work you're doing with our students today. Well, our program really started to offer ASL classes, first of all. We didn't have an official program initially and we weren't under the modern languages department that occurred later where we transferred to the modern languages department. So when that shift occurred, we established the deaf studies program. And I think that was about 2011. So since that time, we offer classes for both hearing and deaf students. And that includes ASL 1, 2, 3, 4, Sociology of American Deaf Communities. And recently we added sign language linguistics. So our students graduate from the program. Like you said, many become sign language interpreters educators in deaf education, social workers, counselors, speech language pathologists, and so on and so forth. Our goal is for students to, is to help them develop their capacities to work with the deaf community, depending on their interests and abilities. Most of our students join the program to become sign language interpreters, 
But for many different reasons, not all students have the linguistic proficiency to succeed in that profession. So many times they shift to a different area where they can help the deaf community, where they really have a passion or need, like for example, mental health, social work, healthcare, education. Part of our fourth quarter global learning objective, there's a project involved where we help students develop their personal mission statement as an agent of change. And part of the student's research is to really find what it is a specific issue that they're passionate about, something that motivates them. And whatever problem they find, deaf people will be there. So for example, alcoholism, eating disorders, domestic violence, there's a range of different problems and deaf people also have that, those problems and need help. So my goal for them is to find a passion and use their skills through the Deaf Studies program to help the community to work with the Deaf community and to improve their lives. John, thank you very much. Just a, a quick follow-up question. Um, for the students that get the AA, the Associate Arts degree, uh, Deaf Studies, it's an option. Um, if they're gonna transfer to a four-year school to pursue a baccalaureate degree, what's the typical transfer pathway? So it really depends on the final goal for the specific student. So if the student wants to become an educator, they'll transfer to a school that has a deaf studies education program, a deaf ed program. Often students first finish with general education. They get their A degree and they transfer to a senior institution finish their education there. And later, because of the certification requirements in the state of New York, they'll get a master's degree in deaf education. Another pathway, if they want to become a sign language interpreter, many of our students join our interpreting program. As you can see, Liz is here. Some join other interpreting programs as well, but the majority of students join RAEIP. If they're interested in other areas like social work or mental health, then they'll find those degree programs at different universities. Good, that's, thank you, thank you. Let's, Let's go to Kim now uh, and talk about all the services that we have at LaGuardia for students that um, are pursuing any of our 62 majors, but may be deaf or hard of hearing. Kim, tell us uh, uh, how long have you been at LaGuardia and what's, what do you do as an advisor? How do you help these students? So I have been the accommodations coordinator for 31 years. Students as a whole have, uh, that come to us for services could be deaf, deaf blind, hard of hearing, uh, have some form of uh, loss in their deafness. And I'd say we'd have at any, at any time 40 to 60 students that we serve per semester. In addition, we also have deaf staff here that, that work at LaGuardia, which really makes us unique. 
Our services ensure that students are able to successfully complete their associate's degree. One thing I would like to emphasize is that deafness is one of the largest uh, disabilities in the country and we have a fairly large program uh, where we accommodate those uh, services. So when we say we accommodate services, we have various needs and they're not all the same. Some students may need a sign language interpreter. Another student may use captioning services. On occasion, they may ask for a note taker. So it, it depends on the student's needs and what best works for them within their classroom to complete their courses. Some students may struggle more and therefore need more support. So we do have one-on-one -on -one tutoring with a tutor that is proficient in American Sign Language, who can really sit one-on-one -on -one with one of our students versus having to work with a sign language interpreter, a third person. So, you know, going through a third person can be difficult at times. So it's nice to have that direct communication and to provide that support in their native language to ensure this success. We also have a wonderful relationship with the LaGuardia staff. They understand our deaf and hard of hearing students. Most of our faculty want to see their success. So we do inform our staff and faculty here that we are here in the event that they need any supports from us. Kim, thank you. Um, and let me thank you for 31 years. I think I, 30, you said 31 years of service to LaGuardia, which is really fantastic. Our students are lucky to have you. We're lucky to have you. Um, question. How do, how do students, for example, in high school in Queens or in New York City, how would they know about the services LaGuardia offers? How would they maybe decide to choose LaGuardia because they're deaf or hard of hearing? And um, you know, if they knew about the support they would get, they might wanna come to us as a first choice school. How do we do that outreach? How do students know about us? You know, at the high school or even just at the community level? That's a great question. I always believe as uh, a person who is a deaf leader within the deaf community, it's really imperative to network. And I do do this during my personal time in addition to my work time because I am I'm constantly networking. I want to make sure that folks out in the community know about LaGuardia Community College. Um, I'm familiar with who some of the leaders are within the community as far as high school education, who the contact people are for each borough. Queens, Manhattan, Bronx, and so forth. Um, I, I'm well known in Queens, but I also feel that our program is unique and strong. And at LaGuardia, students are guaranteed to get support services without any fear or doubt. So I always go to each borough, each of the high schools that have deaf programs. So either I'll go there or we may invite various schools to come to LaGuardia for an open house, talk about what we offer here, give a tour of the campus, and the students love that. And we do explain uh, why accommodations are important to their success because not all high school students understand that term accommodations and, and what that encompasses. 
maybe because they haven't had enough exposure. So once they come to LaGuardia, they're finally able to understand the importance of having those accommodations. And we want to fulfill whatever is lacking in those areas. So, so their academic advisors along, uh, along with myself will meet with students, explain what LaGuardia has to offer for each of their academic career. Thank you. Also, I'd like to add just another point. Another way that students become aware of our services, there are three different programs that are working in conjunctions. So they, they go to different deaf events and together as we represent all three programs. So often we attend these events and represent all three programs. So in the fall, there's the Deaf Expo and Milneck has an Apple Festival, which we attend. So again, the three programs work together to make sure that our reputation spreads in the community. That's great. Um, let's go to Liz now. Uh, and ask Liz to tell us about her program. Um, welcome, Liz. Thanks for being part of this. Hi, good morning. Um, so a little background on the American Sign Language English Interpretation Program at LaGuardia. It was established in 1995 and in 2002 became a grant recipient of the United States Department Education Office of Special Education Programs. We're currently in a grant award for five years, the cycles from 2017 to 2022. And we serve a wide population of students. Uh, the goal of the program is we are, creating, we are creating an opportunity for students to become ASL English interpreters in K through 12 settings, primarily. We do prepare them to work in various settings medical, mental health, uh, family services. They can really work anywhere. We also prepare them for national certification. The program is a bachelor's level program. It's offered in collaboration with the senior institution, SUNY Empire State College. We're a rigorous two-year program and it prepares students who are fluent in American Sign Language to become interpreters. Um, we serve interpreting students from all over New York. Um, we have students that come from out of state as well. And we have an above national average in student diversity within interpreting programs. Our goal is to reflect the diverse populations that they'll go on to serve in the deaf community. Our program has two pathways. One is for a professional certificate in ASL English interpretation. Upon graduation and successful completion of the program, they'll receive a certificate attesting to that. The other option, as I mentioned, is a bachelor's degree from SUNY Empire State. We have an articulation and jointly through this partnership, students will complete the two years with the AEIP and they'll, those two years will satisfy the upper division concentration credits with Empire State. The degree would then be a bachelor's degree in educational studies, ASL English interpretation. Liz, um, I have to ask you this question. Um, do you get students into the program once they complete their associate's degree, you know, coming out of John's program? Yes, we do have this pathway. Many of, of the students from the Deaf Studies program will learn about the AEIP and upon graduation with their associate's degree, they can come and apply for the program, go through our screening process. And currently in our, we have two cohorts, a first year group and a second year group. And our first year cohort out of the eight students, I believe six of them, have just graduated from John's program. So good work, John. Great teamwork. Um, Liz, you know, we talked about, we, we talked with Kim about the various ways 
she and LaGuardia recruit, for example, high school students uh, who are deaf and hard of hearing. We make them aware of our programs uh, and then they can pursue John's program or any degree program. How do you recruit students for your program, which is kind of more specialized and which requires an associate degree to, to enter into it? Like, where do you get your students from? A lot of our students come from networking with the community. Our alumni network is huge and it spans across the country. Um, because we are such a tight knit group, our alumni serve as a huge recruitment point for us in working in the schools that they do. They work with other people who are fluent in sign language or are looking to become fluent in American Sign Language. They'll go on to John's program and then they'll screen for our program. We host annual recruitment events. Every spring we do an open house where we invite instructors from the program, current students and alumni to share their stories, open up for questions to interested people in the audience. We do isolated recruitment events. We'll go to the Deaf Studies program and do a short presentation to the level three and level four ASL students so that they can you know, get their mindset ready to come and screen for the program. We also target, yes, we try and really pull them in, as John said. We also target other community colleges across New York that have ASL programs. Um, again, a lot of our alumni who have connections to these colleges and universities will go and do presentations on behalf of the program. Liz, are you an interpreter, an ASL interpreter yourself? I am an interpreter. I actually graduated from the AEIP in 2015. LaGuardia has been my home since 2014. Um, my mentors were the LaGuardia interpreters. Samantha Pomerico, who is the interpreting service coordinator, was one of my mentors as well. We have a very strong relationship with the interpreting services, and many of our students will graduate, become do their internship with LaGuardia's interpreters, and then be hired on. As we have Andrea and Jennifer, they're hired on as interpreters with LaGuardia. So it's a close-knit family. It's uh, all in the LaGuardia family, right? Yes. Um, you know, I want to point something out for our viewers, uh, going back to Kim's comments. I'm not sure we mentioned it, but it's important for people to know all of the services Kim described are free of charge. Um, so that students thinking about LaGuardia uh, who are coming on financial aid or, you know, um, paying their tuition. However, the, the, the special support services Kim described having interpreters, note takers, tutors, all of that is free of charge. Um, I just want people to know that. So uh, something else I wanted to ask you about, uh, really this is for any of you, but Liz has made me think about it. When you spoke about the diversity of your students in the AEIP program uh, and serving you know, our very diverse Queens community. Um, there was a really interesting article last month, January, in the New York Times about Black American Sign Language, BASL. And I wonder, you know, where are we with Black American Sign Language at LaGuardia? That's for anybody to answer. First, number one, in sign language linguistics, we do discuss BASL in depth. Black ASL in depth. And we have for the past three years. So the course really talks about BASL and make sure that our students are conversant with that specific topic. We also make it clear that if somebody's more interested in BASL, they can join our sign language linguistics class. So sign language linguistics is only offered at CUNY. So it's specific to our system. So we're the only campus, only LaGuardia offers this class. Also, that's true for all of, of all, for all of New York City. We're the only one who offers this course. So no other colleges in New York City offer sign language linguistics. 
at the undergraduate level? Yeah, so Black ASL is not something that's new. We've had this for a very long time, dates back in history. And it's always been within the deaf community, but I have to say that I grew up in New, New York or people who grew up in New York, we learned uh, just regular American sign language. We didn't really know that there was a difference until we went to other states and met with other deaf, black deaf professionals in other areas, maybe at conferences or various things, who actually now study black American sign language and are getting their doctorates in the field. So there is actually more and more research that is happening now that we didn't have maybe 10, 15 years ago. The research in itself is more recent, but we do share resources to assist each other. And we try to, uh, we're trying to um, get those who use Black ASL and collect the information and the history and the signs before we lose them. Because it, it's, it's considered a, you know, we're, a language that is, that is being lost. So we want to be sure that we preserve that language. And, and it's a really beautiful language. It's not really taught. It's something that came about during segregation. And so we want to preserve the beauty of that language. John? If I could add something about the signs. So the word black signed like this, my understanding is it's very interesting. It's an interesting concept. It speaks to who's allowed to sign certain things, certain ways. So individuals who are not members of the community sign it like this with the one hand shape, but individuals who are part of the black community sign it differently like this. So insiders versus outsiders. So it's, it includes everything. It includes culture, it, it includes identi identity, it includes group membership. So therefore, if you're a member of that specific community, you have permission to sign it this specific way versus individuals who are not part of the community, respect the community and sign it the first way with the one handshake. So recently there's, there's, we have a new vice president, Kamala Harris, and the deaf community was trying to figure out her sign name, but what was happening within the deaf community is there was a group of black deaf Indian women who came together to collaborate and take on the responsibility of discussing and brainstorming and figuring out what her name sign should be. And other members of the deaf community took a step back to let them decide. So they discussed it and recently they announced that her name sign is this. Kamala Harris, like this. The reason being, my understanding, is that the name Kamala means lotus. And for Indian culture, this is the sign for lotus. So from Indian sign language, we borrowed the movement to create this. What are some other things about uh, all the great services and programs we have for deaf and, and hard of hearing students in LaGuardia that you'd like to mention, maybe just as we as we fit, you know, it's too much, we haven't covered it all. Um, what are some other things that you wanna mention or some special highlights 
that you that you would like to add to the discussion before we conclude? Yes, yes, I can add something. So our program is very, it has a really good reputation. It's, it's known in the area as being an amazing program. So we have students coming from all over the place, from Myopec, from Nassau County, from the Hamptons, specifically for our classes. So I think that speaks to our reputation. If uh, I could add, we also have deaf role models here at LaGuardia, such as myself as a black deaf woman. And oftentimes when I meet deaf and hard of hearing high school students or maybe a student that comes here from another country a deaf and hard of hearing student, they don't realize that I'm deaf. They think maybe I'm a hearing interpreter because deaf and hard of hearing students don't often see adult deaf role models in higher level professions or in higher level education. So that's, that's one challenge that we have here that we wanna encourage deaf and hard of hearing students that they can succeed in anything that they would like to do. Oftentimes, uh, depending upon cultures, deaf and hard of hearing children um, are believed not to be able to be successful and therefore oppressed. And that's one of the reasons I love my job because I can advocate for the students all the way until they complete their associate's degree and then further on to assist them in transferring, getting their bachelor's and seeing them move forth into other higher education levels. So it's, it's been really wonderful for me. It's very helpful. Thank you. Liz, how about the wrap up? To add to both John and Kim's points, I think that LaGuardia is extremely fortunate to have the diversity in the students and the faculty that we do especially for those who are coming to LaGuardia as deaf students for accommodations or as hearing students to learn American Sign Language. Um, we've seen today and we've learned that ASL is not a one size fits all. And we have that beautiful opportunity here to see that as well as accommodations are not one size fits all. And students are fortunate to come to LaGuardia and experience that, that they can get the accommodations that they need in order to succeed, as well as the interpreting students get to learn and the hearing students who are in the classes seeing the interpretations get to see um, how we can accommodate all of the deaf and hard of hearing students here at LaGuardia. Well, Liz, thank you. That is a good way. John, I'm sorry, you want to add something? Yes, that really sums it up. This is such a wonderful deaf ecosystem. So we have three programs that work hand in hand closely together. That's very unique. The environment for any student who wants to learn ASL, for a deaf hard of hearing student, for interpreting students, it's unique here because they're not going to find three programs working in conjunction at other colleges. And I would like to add that as far as the faculty here and staff at LaGuardia, we're always open to a new way of thinking. We are always trying to prepare for the future, especially now with uh, COVID-19 We've been working on how to best accommodate our students uh, with new technologies and so forth. So we are really able to work together and to be ready for what comes in the future. Kim, thank you. And thanks to, to all three of you. Um, this has been really uh, informative and enjoyable. Uh, again, for me in, in the middle, to have all three of you from the different programs in one Zoom, you know, in one discussion, pulling together the really exciting story 
of all that we do at LaGuardia for students who are deaf and hard of hearing. And frankly, that more broadly, um, LaGuardia's role as an institution that's so important to the deaf community in this part of uh, the country uh, and the leadership role we have uh, in serving the deaf community. So it's, it's just a very, very powerful uh, and something all of us at LaGuardia are ext extremely proud of. So thanks for taking the time to speak to me this morning. Thank you to Liz Loria, to Kimberly Lucas and John Collins, and a special thanks to Jennifer Ward and Andrea Crummer, our interpreters, our ASL interpreters for this meeting. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you on campus someday soon as the pandemic fades and we can get back to LaGuardia. Uh, and thank you again for all the wonderful work you do for our students. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.